Nuclear energy is thought of as this huge, faceless, unimaginative industry. But that's changing. Breakthrough sat down with some of the leaders and supporters of the growing advanced nuclear industry about why nuclear is still important and what's being done to make it more innovative. Well, we need to save the world. We need clean energy. We need it to be abundant and affordable. Nuclear uh, has the wonderful luxury of being the sort of most concentrated energy source available to mankind now. So I find it as a completer. You need nuclear as an all-encompassing piece of a big energy puzzle. It can power cheaply all the other economies in the world. Energy especially, um, it's the biggest market in the world. And everyone needs it, and hopefully everyone can get it in a clean way. One of the most exciting things about this new crop of startups and innovators in nuclear is that they're young, often women, and they're attracted to this, not because they want a you know, 50 year career at a big company or a national lab, but because they want to solve problems in the world, because they care about humanity, they care about climate change, um, and they want to have big impacts. There's a lot of innovation, a lot of creativity, a lot of problem solving to be done that is much more exciting. We actually can step right into building a prototype and then have plants much quicker than we did originally. We see a lot of innovation developing right now. There are many companies in this space who want to innovate, who want to make some substantial progress in reactor design. And so we're seeing kind of a culmination of different organizations that support nuclear right now, and also different reactor design companies that want to see innovation and follow kind of the Silicon Valley model. We need to change the sort of pathway to commercialization so that we can accommodate these new designs um, so that we have a more innovative sector. And luckily, there's a lot underway to make that happen right now. When we've looked at what it costs to build current reactors, it turns out to be enormously expensive per kilogram of steel, concrete, and copper compared to other products like automobiles and windmills. So there's enormous potential to reduce these costs, but we need better technologies and better strategies for building and deploying them. Aircraft industry is one. If you look at how instead of airplanes being totally stovepipe built, everything, engines, wings, and all, it's totally diversified across the planet. So you kind of get that focus, that economic technological focus that if you're great at wings, you build wings. If you're great at engines, you build engines. Likewise in the nuclear industry. Biotech, a phased licensing process, address early issues early on. And then we've got commercial space launch. Look at SpaceX, a different model for how it is that you develop rockets that is very quick, efficient, and at SpaceX, the key thing that they do is that they iterate rapidly. So they build, test, build, and test. And it's much easier to do that if you're working with smaller reactors and if you're working with advanced reactors that use coolants like molten salts. Electric vehicles, for example. You have companies like Tesla where people are lining up to buy their cars that haven't even been built yet. And we need to get people that excited about nuclear energy. If you look at the general tech industry, both software, but also hardware. These are companies that are making innovations and they're doing so rapidly by being able to test what it is that they want to deploy and then improve. This is just the beginning of a new conversation. There is unlikely to be a 21st century nuclear renaissance without first creating a 21st century nuclear industry. To learn more, read our report, How to Make Nuclear Innovative at www.thebreakthrough.org.